If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause this video and first try to answer the question on your own before listening on. In order to calculate the repulsive force that would act between these two coins, we can actually apply Coulomb's law. And of course, Coulomb's law tells us that the force acting between two charged objects or two charged particles will equal a constant, K, multiplied by the magnitude of charge on the first particle or object times the magnitude of charge on the second particle or object divided by the distance between those two objects or particles squared. Now, the distance between our two objects is given to be one meter, so the R value is rather easy and then K is a constant. The challenge here is to find the amount of charge present on each of the two coins, the QA and QB. Now, as the question notes, ordinarily the amount of charge on a proton and electron are equal in their magnitude. And we know that that charge has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So we can say that the charge on an ordinary electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And of course, that would be the magnitude of the charge. And then the magnitude of charge on a proton is going to be the same value. Now, of course, in this question, we are told that in this hypothetical scenario that the magnitude of the charges actually will differ by a very fractional amount of a percentage. And so what we have to do is adjust one of these two values. And it turns out that it wouldn't really matter which of the two values we do adjust. So we're going to go ahead and just adjust the amount of charge on the proton. And what we do is take the charge that ordinarily is present on a proton, we're going to multiply it by the given percentage. Now make sure that you convert this percentage into a decimal. So we're going to have to move this decimal point two places to the left, just like we would ordinarily convert a percent into a decimal. So we're going to end up with a couple of extra zeros after the decimal point. So we'll have those two zeros and then also the three zeros that were originally present. So we'll multiply this percentage by the amount of charge and then we're going to turn around and add that right back on to this charge. And that's going to give us the hypothetical new amount of charge on this proton. So let's first compute this value and then we'll add it on to the original charge. And so we've done that. This represents the difference in the charge between the electron and proton. We just turn around and add that back on to the charge of the proton. And that's going to give us this hypothetical new value. So we can see that we have concluded that the amount of charge on the proton is actually just a little bit more than its actual value. And this tiny bit of charge is represented by that 0.0001%. So it's just a little bit more than its usual value. So now that we have the charges of a single electron and a single proton, what we want to do is figure out how many total protons and total electrons would be present on one of the coins. Now, we are told that each coin contains 3 times 10 to the 22 atoms. So we're going to have to take each of these two values and multiply them by 3 times 10 to the 22. So now we have this new amount of charge for the electrons and protons that are present in the 3 times 10 to the 22 copper atoms. But we're still not done because each atom contains 29 protons and 29 electrons. So we have to take the amount of charge supplied by the electrons and multiply it by 29 since each atom contains 29 of them. And then we have to take the amount of charge supplied by the protons and multiply that by 29 again since each atom contains 29 protons. So now in the purple boxes, we have the total magnitude of charge supplied by the electrons and then the total magnitude of charge supplied by the protons. Now, of course, with the electrons, the actual charge is negative and with the protons, the actual charge is positive. So let's go ahead and make the total charge supplied by the electrons negative. Put a little negative sign right there. And then the total charge supplied by the protons will remain positive. What we want to do is add these two charges together. And that's going to give us the total amount of charge present on a single coin. So we'll go ahead and add these two quantities together. And when we do that, we can see that the total amount of charge, which we can represent as sigma q if we wish to, that is present on a single coin is 
0.92 coulombs. So finally, we have the amount of positive charge present on a single coin. The other coin would be the same, since they are identical coins. We're going to go ahead then and finally plug in this amount of coulombs in for the charge on the first coin and the charge on the second coin, along with the Coulomb's law constant and the distance between the two coins, which was one meter. And when we do that and work that out on our calculators, we end up with a force acting between the two coins of 1.7 times 10 to the eighth newtons. So this is a rather large force that would exist between two tiny little coins. The question says, what do you conclude? Frankly, I'm not really sure what they're looking for there, but we can conclude, I suppose, that thankfully the amount of charge on a proton and electron does not differ by this very fractional amount of a percentage, because if it did, then all the coins sitting in our pockets and our piggy banks would be repelling each other with a very large force, and that would be a very strange situation. So we can conclude the question by noting the force as being 1.7 times 10 to the eighth newtons. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. And remember that you can send a picture or full text of your question to the email address displayed on the screen. And I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.